Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on stomach acid and, hydro and HCL, using hydrochloric acid to boost your stomach acid, and what does it mean when you feel worse? This is an important topic. HCL is an important, we'll call it a nutrient to help with getting that digestive cascade moving. It lowers the pH, it helps activate proteolytic enzymes, it helps set your whole digestive system up to work. And what does it mean if you can't tolerate HCL? Uh, before we dive in, make sure you smash that like button. Put your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this topic and things that have helped or hurt you in the process. All right, let's dive in. So HCL, hydrochloric acid, right? It's a hydrogen and a chloride, and it's basically a very low pH, 2, 3 pH on that pH scale of 1 to 14. Seven's neutral in the middle. That's water. One's pure acid. 14's pure pure base, pure alkaline, and our stomach needs to be more on the acidic side, two, two, two and a half, three maybe, maybe even below two, and we need adequate levels of stomach acid to do it. Now, stomach acid has multiple roles. It's a cleaner. It's like a, um, a disinfectant, if you will. It kills bacteria, makes it harder for bacteria and critters to live, right? A lot of these critters don't like an acidic environment, so it makes it harder for bacteria. It's like a disinfectant. Two, it activates proteolytic enzymes, so it helps with activating pepsinogen to pepsin. A lot of our enzymes are pH driven, so we need a nice low pH in the stomach to get those proteolytic enzymes going. Uh, it also lowers the general pH of all of the chyme, which is all the mixed up food in your stomach. It lowers that pH, and then when that enters into your small intestine, that nice low pH triggers cholecystokinin to release, which, is bile, which triggers gallbladder to contract and produce bile. It also is gonna trigger your pancreas to make a whole bunch of enzymes and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate then takes that low pH, brings it right back up to a more neutral pH in your small intestine, but also you're triggering a whole bunch of enzymes along the way. So if we don't have that nice chyme in your stomach all acidified, you're not gonna get the good trigger of cholecystokinin, you're not gonna have good gallbladder flow, you're not gonna have good pancreatic enzyme flow either. At the same time, we don't want to overdo it because then you're taxing your pancreas to make a whole bunch of bicarbonate to, to bring everything back up to um, a neutral pH. And if we don't have that bicarbonate control or release, then we can also potentially create a peptic ulcer. So we got to be careful with HCL. Less is always more. We got to be careful. Now, if you take hydrochloric acid and you feel worse or you have some kind of irritation, it's usually because your gut lining is starting to thin. We call that atrophic gastritis. So thin out gut lining it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't have HCL. It means right now you can't tolerate it. That gut lining is very thin. It's the equivalent. I give this analogy to my patients all the time. It's like you having back pain or, or joint pain, you needing a chiropractic adjustment or a massage support, but you just got a sunburn that day. Your skin's so sore, so irritated, it can't handle the input from an adjustment or a massage. Well, you may need that adjustment in a massage, but you're just not able to handle it. Well, same thing if you have atrophic gastritis. If your gut's inflamed, you you may need more digestive support, but you may not be able to handle it. So what do we do? Well, first off, if it makes you feel worse, if it irritates things, don't do that, okay? Number two, we gotta focus on healing and supporting. So one of the first things we can do is make sure your diet's 100% dialed in. Um, again, that could, it just depends where you're coming from, how good or bad your diet is. If it's already good, we may have to do additional things to make it even better. If it's kind of a crappy standard American diet, well, moving to a paleo template at least out of the gates is going to be good. Again, if we're if our gut is really raw, we may need to be focusing on pre-digestive techniques, instapotting our food, cooking it up, steaming, sauteing, really breaking down our food more so our intestines and our stomach has less stress to be able to break it down, right? Raw food, undigested food, food more in a raw state, it's going to be hard to digest. So cooking helps pre-digest that food. Also just chewing our food enough pre-digest it. Uh, avoiding a whole bunch of hydration with food helps too because water is a pH of seven, right? And that's going to take your pH of one to three and bring it way up more in the um, alkaline direction. So we got to be careful with overhydration. Chewing our food, I mentioned. Taking systemic enzymes can be very helpful because that is going to add a bunch of enzymes, but it won't add a bunch of acidity. Now, again, you need acidity to activate your enzymes. So taking supplemental enzymes could still be helpful in the short run while you help your gut lining heal. We may add in gut healing nutrients. So my line, we use a product called GI Restore that has glutamine and aloe and DGL and uh, a bunch of zinc in there. Zinc shown to help with gut inflammation and gut permeability. Okra, a whole bunch of really good nutrients to calm down that gut lining, right? Okra's high in vitamin U, right? 
kind of the, the ulcer nutrient, right? So we want to build up that gut lining, really help get it a little bit more thicker, get the inflammation down, and then hopefully we can start adding in some acidity. So we may add in just some gentle bitters or maybe even a little bit of ginger and kind of taper up. Uh, typically, I'm recommending to my patients my ginger tea recipe, which you can find on another video and or blog post where we're doing the ginger tea, juice ginger, not like ginger from a tea bag, juice ginger. We're adding in manuka honey as well because manuka honey is actually used on burn victims in hospitals. So we put it in the tea and that actually provides a really nice buffer and a coating uh, on the gut lining and can really soothe things. So we're pre-digesting our food. We're adding in ginger tea, manuka honey. We're adding in the GI Restore, the healing nutrients. I'll put the link down below for that so you guys can see it. We're adding in more enzymes. We're making sure we're chewing our food. We're focusing on hydrating either 10 minutes before or an hour and a half, two hours afterwards. We're doing all these really good things to make sure we have good stability in the gut and we're not overly inflaming and irritating it. So really important. Also, you got to get to the underlying issue, right? Why are you having these issues to begin with? Now, there could be some other things going on underneath the hood. There could be H. pylori in the small in the stomach, right? Slash small intestine. There could be SIBO or bacterial overgrowth. All of these things could play a role, right? We need stomach acid to close that esophageal sphincter. We need um, if we had a dysbiotic balance in the gut, right, increase in bad microbes, that could cause that sphincter to stay open too, and maybe have acid rise up and cause irritation higher up in the stomach in that cardiac area, right? It's always possible. So you got to get to the root underlying issue, and there's always a couple of things happening, right? It's never just one thing. A lot of times it could just be one, but it could be multiple things and equally sharing the responsibility. So you got to get to the root underlying issue of why that is there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have an issue that you want to dive in deeper on and get to the root cause, click down below. You'll be able to see a link to schedule with myself and colleagues worldwide virtually as well. And um, let me know things that you've done that have helped and improved your life from a, a digestive perspective and, and help with that gut irritation, gut burning issue and things that you've done to help with the um, hydrochloric acid. Now, one other thing is we'll start with hydrochloric acid once we have stability, but we'll start at a very, very small amount maybe just a couple milligrams, and we'll just kind of go up from there, and we'll always do it with food in our stomach. Get the gut stable before we add anything in there that could be potentially irritating. An irritating gut, unstable gut, it's going to set you up for a world of hurt because when we start going after any gut microbes, some of these herbs could be abrasive on that gut lining, so we want to make sure your gut lining is soothed and relaxed. All right, it's Dr. J here signing off. Click down below if you want to reach out and get more information at your fingertips. You guys